All right, the exam review. Number one, a jet ski driver wants to go to a friend's houseboat, which is anchored 18 kilometers away, east 30 degrees north. So you're starting down here somewhere, and you're going east north. So you want to go up here. And the angle, this angle, is 30 degrees. He can go 25 kilometers per hour relative to the water, and the river is flowing east. So if he actually aims for this point, he's going to end up down here somewhere. And he doesn't want to end up down here. So he needs to aim west of where he really wants to go. And he needs to let the river carry him. Okay, so the river is going 10 kilometers per hour east. And he can go 25 kilometers per hour relative to the water. And so that's this one, 25 kilometers per hour. And so the question wants to know what direction must he head. So really what you want is this whole angle right here. Because to give direction, it has to be with respect to the east or the west. So before we can get this whole angle right here, we have to get theta in there. Okay, so if we know this lower one here is 30, alternate interior tells us that this one is 30 as well. And so then we can do sine law. Okay, and so looking for angles, so sine theta, and across from it is 10 kilometers per hour, and that will equal sine of 30, and across from it is 25 kilometers per hour. So sine theta equals 10 kilometers per hour sine of 30 over 25 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's going to be 5 on the top, or sine, 11.53, something that I can't see, 7. It's not good to have the calculator too far away. All right, but that's just the angle inside, so now to get the full angle that they're asking you for, you have to add it to 30, and then you're going to put it in square bracket from the east. 41.537 degrees north. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. Which way should he head? The second part says, how long will it take him to reach the boat? So we know, or whatever it was he was going to, we know this whole thing is 18 kilometers. So if we knew the speed of this side, we could find the time. So we can find the speed of this side now that we have um, everything else, right? So we know angles, we know sides. You could either use sine law or cosine law again. Um, this angle in here, now that we know that one's 11, 41, so this one's what? 138. 138.5. And so you could either use sine law or cosine law. Maybe I'll use cosine law just because we haven't. So looking for v squared, it'll be equal to a squared, which is 10 kilometers per hour squared, plus b squared, 25 kilometers per hour squared, and then minus 2a, 10 kilometers per hour, b, I'm going to run out of sheet, 25 kilometers per hour times the cos of the angle I just subtracted to get 138.463 and I got that by adding up the other two inside and take them away from 180 and so when you do this you get a V of 33.155 I think kilometers per hour so then remembering that complicated equation from grade 10 V av equals delta D over delta T, so delta T equals delta D over V av. So it was 18 kilometers divided by 33.155 kilometers per hour. And 
doing the math, you should get something like 0 0.5429 of an hour. So just a bit over a half an hour. All right, that's number one. Next on my list is number three. Number three says a skier starts from rest uh, and skis down a 20 degree inclined plane that's 100 meters long. So inclined plane, 100 meters long, of course is going to be this way. Um, and it's angled at 20 degrees. So here starts from rest. The coefficient of friction, mu, is 0 0.09. What is the skier's speed at the base of the incline? So we're making the skier a box. Fg is acting down. There's going to be an Fgy and an Fgx. Friction is going to be going backwards. Fn will be going up. And it doesn't say anything about him pushing, so you have to assume that he's coasting. So some of the forces in the y will equal zero, and it will be Fn minus Fgy equals zero. So Fn should be equal to, this is theta, so that's cos theta, mg cos theta. Don't have a mass, can't find it. So we go to some of the forces in the x equal to max. Skier starts to rest, coefficient, what is the skier's speed at the base of the incline? So we need to find his acceleration. So we have fgx going down, friction going backward, and that will equal max. So this will be mg sine theta minus mu mg cos theta equals max. And the m's will cancel, and we're looking for a. So ax is going to be equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Sine, I think it was 20 degrees, minus 0 0.09 times 9.81 meters per second squared cos of 20 degrees. Punch this in your calculator to get 2.5256 2.5256 meters per second squared. But the question wants to know the speed at the bottom, so then you would do Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta d starts from rest it says so vf squared is equal to 2 times this 2.5256 meters per second squared and it told us the length of the hill was a hundred meters long don't forget to take the square root and when you do I think you get 22.475 22.475 meters per second is that blurry, blurry for anyone else or just me all right so that's the first part of number three of number three the second part of number three says if the snow is level at the bottom of the hill and the skier keeps going how far would the skier travel assuming that the coefficient of the level snow is the same on the hill. So this is level out here, but out here the only thing that's going to stop them is friction going backward. Right? And so he's no longer on the hill. Um, and so his acceleration will change if we do the sum of the forces. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do energy or forces. If we do it as forces, some of the forces in the x this time will just be negative friction is equal to max. Um, so negative mu, and this time it's just going to be mg because he's on a level surface. Again, the m's will cancel. 
So this time is AX will be negative 0 0.09.